What's going on everyone? Kyle and Lauren here and we are Rentals to Wealth. Last week we began demoing this place and because we're juggling a house hack with a buy and hold investment, this renovation keeps getting bigger and bigger. As always. But in this episode, we're gonna continue prepping the house renovations and we're gonna to talk to you about how we invest in real estate while working full-time jobs. And with that, the most important thing about investing in real estate while working a full-time job is making sure you have Wi-Fi in the place that you're renovating. So I called before we even closed on the house to make sure that we had service, but I did forget an ethernet cable or an <laughs> internet cable. So we're gonna to run to the local hardware store and get one really quick. All right, let's set up some Wi-Fi. I don't know what this is for. Ooh, it says it's connecting. Mm, so we can't detect a cable signal. This is on, right? What's wrong with you? Why are you making that sound? So let's move to a different cable outlet. All right, so after a lot of running around and trying all of the cable wires in every bedroom, we realized that the only cable wire that works is the one smack dab in the middle of the demo that we're doing. I have a meeting, so let's go set up my office upstairs and let's get to work. All right. Hi everyone, how are you? Good morning. <laughs> All right, and that's it for that meeting. Obviously I'm not done working for the day, but let me go see if Kyle needs any help and uh, then I'll get back to it. Baby, we have internet. I have pizza. What? I'm starving. <laughs> and Pastor Elio's is sick inside. They have like a hundred pies made. You can do slices, look at these. And we can walk there. Hi, I'm hopping on a call. You're hopping on a call? Yeah. I guess we're taking a break from pulling laugh down. Lauren's gotta hop on a meeting. With her remote schedule and my new change in schedule, we're definitely now true weekend warriors. We get asked all the time, how do we work full-time jobs and invest in real estate? The short answer is we have no life, but that's not very helpful. So here are a few tips for investing in real estate while working full time. First thing is a strong why. I'm gonna be honest, real estate investing is frustrating, it's exhausting, it's gonna bring you to tears. So if you do not have a strong why, you're probably gonna quit. Second thing is use systems and processes. There's no reason you should be manually collecting rent. So utilize technology and different types of platforms to make big jobs, not take up a lot of time. Third thing is to hire things out. Your job may be super demanding and you can't be here to DIY. So if you don't have the time, hire somebody who does. And the fourth thing is just take care of your future self. And two examples of this, one is while you're renovating, make sure you're using durable products so you don't get maintenance calls in the future. And the other thing is doing more like admin and management stuff. Document a process that when you have to do it maybe three months or a year in the future, you don't have to rethink it again. You already got it written down. Before we leave you for the day, I did want to touch on why we do still both work full time. First, we both still really like our jobs. You know, I can understand if people are miserable and it's really hurting your soul to go to work every day until you want to get out of there as quickly as possible, but that's just not the case for us. Number two, obviously more money coming in from our salaries means more properties and more money we could use to grow our portfolio. We are definitely in the growth phase and the more money the better. And then three, having W-2 income makes you more bankable. So if you want to do that awesome burr strategy and refinance at the end into a nice 30 year fixed conventional loan, having W-2 income definitely makes it a lot easier. So just our tips, cause we get asked that question a lot. We will see you guys tomorrow. Saturday at the house, brought our little pup with us. Very excited because since we're gonna be house hacking this place, this is gonna be his new home. The yard is already fenced in, so we're gonna see how he likes it. I think, think? He, I think he's so excited. We're home, buddy. We're home. What do you think? Now that Bodie's got the lay of the land, we definitely wanna get down here stripped down and ready but it's getting a little tough to move in here. So let's get all this crap out of here. I hate a dirty work site.
few different ways you could be getting rid of renovation debris. You can either, if it's a small job, just put it in bags, put it out of the curb with the regular garbage, or look up your local dump and you could take it there. I think it only costs us about 40 bucks per truck bed. Or you could get a dumpster and that probably for this job would have ran us around like $500. Weighing cost savings with the size of your job, you could easily determine which one you need. And now that we think about it, we probably should have gotten a dumpster. And now that we're shoveling and kicking up a lot of debris, gonna need one of these bad boys. So I put it on right. All right, that's enough. That is gonna be so heavy. What have you done to me? I always load it too much. <laughs> Loaded up the truck, so excited to go to the local dump to get rid of all of it. The website says they're open till two on Saturday. We just called to make sure, and they're like, oh no, we actually close at noon. It's, <laughs> it's 11.40, we're not making it. Well, that's frustrating, now we're gonna drive around with a bed full of junk for a week. It's not like we haven't done it before. Though. I know, it's, it's just annoying, typical. it's just annoying. We always have junk in our truck. So if you want, just set the um, set the camera because, or maybe on this wall. I'm gonna start on this wall, and time lapse this wall. Time lapse what though? The pl me taking the plaster off. I thought this was it. No. Okay. So good example. Feel this wall. Like actually feel it. Like do you feel how cold that is? And it's because there's no insulation. Like we were finding over there, it's always gonna be like this. It's always gonna be cold. You're always gonna lose heat. You're always gonna lose air in the summer. So what I'm thinking is, I'll show you out here, this is a good example. Halfway up the wall, do like, take off like four pieces of lath, and then like towards the top, take off like four pieces. And then we'll use that blow-in insulation machine with the, with the hose, and we'll blow the insulation down, fill it up to where I took this lath off, tack it back up, and then go up to the top and fill it up the rest of the way. Just in like every bay along these outside walls. All right, nothing to like back up that <laughs> plan because I've never done it before and I've actually never seen anybody do it before. I have always used back style insulation. So I'm curious if that's the way you're supposed to do it because that's how I would do it. But do you, do you think that sounds right? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> if I would explain that to you, you would think that was right. Like I've done that a hundred <laughs> times before. <laughs> you, were, you sound very convincing. Right? Yeah. Hold on. You know what we're going to do? Over the years that we've been on Instagram and we've had our Instagram, we've developed some relationships with some other other people in there, whether they be investors or contractors or whatever. Call Steve. That's who I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call him right now, live. What is up, my friends? What's up, man? Hey, say what's up to the YouTube community. What is up, YouTube? How are you? <laughs> Actually, I wanna pick your brain for a second. We're doing a, an old, you know, plaster and lath house. I had a bunch of like different kind of insulation around along with just no insulation at all. Yep. So what I'm thinking about doing is Yeah, it sounds like a cool idea to me too. Um, something to think about is do you have knob and tube in the house? Okay, yeah, good, good point. Yeah, because once we insulate with knob and tube, it now becomes a violation. All right, buddy, you want to sign out? Good seeing you guys. Great luck. I can't wait to see how it goes. This is Steve from Dunright Home Solutions. Signing off. <laughs> Later, buddy. Thank, thanks. I'll let you know how, how it turns out. So does that help you? But it was nice to be able to talk it out with like somebody else and bounce ideas That actually knows what they're talking about yeah. and not just me. My biggest concern also is that when you have knob and tube, it's not rated for insulation. So to have knob and tube in a house is not a violation for code. But once you insulate, it now becomes a violation. So these old houses, it may look like up-to-date electric, but it may tie into knob and tube somewhere. So later on down the line, I may find that I have knob and tube and I've blown in insulation all down here behind the walls. And now all of a sudden it's a violation and I need to tear it all out. So I'd almost rather just like make sure that there is none behind these walls, do bat insulation, Fairing strip the studs out, re-rock it, and then we know. And it'll make us, it'll bring us flush to the frames and we don't have any issues. Does anyone remember, like, I don't know, last week or two weeks ago? Or five minutes ago. Or five minutes ago <laughs> when we were like, we're just gonna take the paneling down. It's gonna be like a quick, easy, low cost renovation. I don't know 
why I still think that <laughs> it's gonna be a quick, easy, low cost renovation. It has never been a quick, easy, low cost renovation. This is like when we talk about our CapEx items yeah. and taking care of our future selves to make sure that our furnace is not working overtime because the house is not well insulated. And also that later on down the line, we don't find some violation of knob and tube and have to redo a bunch of work that we've already done. And then that is a major cost loss. He really can't get any cuter. Oh, buddy, why are you so cute? Buddy. He's a boy. He's he is a such a good boy. Yeah. Your baby. Alright, so we can still start in here though. Like I'll lay the tarp out. I gotta kill these receptacles though. You wanna go downstairs and flip breakers for me? Oh! Cluggy cluggy? Star flipping breakers. Roger that. What's my call sign? 0189, this is 5690. All right, let's see what I'm looking at. This is not labeled at all. All right, we're gonna hit the first one. Did that do anything? Keep going. Um, okay, right now. Not it, turn it back on. Right now. Not it, turn it back on. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is like almost the last one, right now. Not it. Turn it back on. I mean, that's it besides the the main. All right, hit the main. All right, turned it off. Roger, Roger, come back up. Well, I don't trust these old valves to stop water. I like didn't cap these last time we were here after I pulled the vanity and it's all I thought about all night was like was this valve failing and water like flooding the house. That would suck. That's gonna do it for us today. I'm tired, full of dust. Luckily we had masks with us or that would have been rough. Lauren looks about 90 years old with her gray hair. Because <laughs> there's plastic dust, there's like all in it. I, I have to show you. Oh my God, you should see it from this angle, literally. You look like an old lady, like a cute old lady. You're gonna be married to this. Dude, give your head like a shake. Oh my God, dude, dude that was so white. <laughs> all right, we'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. Happy Sunday, we are back down again and the demo continues. Basically the plan for today is to try to finish taking down all this lath. We're gonna do more in the dining room, hopefully get some work done in the kitchen. Trying to convince Kyle to not demo the ceiling. And we're definitely not gonna demo the ceiling. We got eyes on the fact that our rafters are running in the direction that we want them to be to open this wall up. But it's a good thing to take away that if we don't have to tear out this whole ceiling to kind of not tear it out. Like if I'm able to just cut a valley down to where we're gonna put our light fixture, that's all I'm gonna do just to get some electric to it from a switch. And we don't have to then finish the entire ceiling. That's a, that's a, lot, of, that's a lot of sheets. And um, it's a pretty significant savings if you can get around not having to tear it all out. So we're gonna keep demoing, and I know you guys are probably sick of it, so we're trying to make it a little quick. <laughs> so, a lesson that I learned, don't get your industrial pierced. If you walk into a house for sale and it looks like this, my immediate thought is, oh my gosh, so much work that has to be done. Now when I see a place like this, I'm like, oh, half the work's done already. <laughs> <laughs> You guys saw the videos of what this place looked like when I first bought it, like, decent, right? Like, oh, coat of paint, switch out the floors, new cabinets, gonna be great. The more you peel back the layers in these old houses, the more damage you find, and I feel like we always end up, like, taking down the walls and basically, like, getting it to a condition like this. So, if you are a newbie or maybe you haven't done crazy renovations before, don't be scared off by stuff like this. It's really just a sign a lot of the work's been done for you already. And... A little thing of good news, we do see that this was only put there 
because they probably had doors here. So this whole header looking thing isn't even a header and we can bring it all the way to the ceiling. Love when we have the ability to open things up like that. Whoa. What up, son? That really opens it up. All right? We're gonna start taking this little partition wall down. We know it's not load bearing, because here I'll show you. Okay, so these rafters, or joists, whichever direction you're looking at them from, are two by eights, okay? So we got one here. Then we have our wall, which this is just a little one by nailer. It's not actually a rafter. I don't know if you can really tell from here, but the next rafter isn't until another like 10 inches that way. So where this wall is at, it actually falls right in between rafters. It's not supporting anything. There's no support above it. And that's how you can tell if this is gonna be load bearing. There's literally nothing sitting on top. The only point of it was either for nailer for the, for this ceiling and just to create separation, which we are now taking down. I just wanna give you a real quick, I'm pulling this whole piece down, but so I still have plaster here and I've got lath here. So let's say I only wanted to take this portion out. This is a perfect example of why you don't use a Sawzall when working with plaster and lath, when you're trying to cut one piece out but keep another. Use the oscillating tool, the flush cutter, because you're gonna get something like this if you try to use a saw. See how it grabs that piece of lath and it just shakes it back and forth? Now I just busted like a big crack here on this side because it's gonna grab that whole piece and it's gonna shake it. If you use that flush cutter, it won't grab it. You'll be able to cut a nice flush line so you won't get that grab and shake. Sometimes it won't even bust the plaster off. Sometimes you literally can't cut it. Like it just grabs it and it won't stay still to actually make those cuts. So that's when you take out your hammer. So we're just taking this all down? Yeah. <laughs> but how high can I go? Probably not die. <laughs> <laughs> That was a high kick. Damn. That's the most demo-y thing I've ever seen you do. You have never been hotter. That's it for us this weekend. I feel like we got a lot done though. I feel like I'm a thousand <laughs> years old. We probably could have gotten a lot more done if we just went into this with a freaking sledgehammer tearing everything down. But I think it's a really good tip to take away that a methodical demo to set yourself up for a nice smooth renovation is always a really important thing. We did get this wall taken down at the bottom of the stairs to really accentuate that open feel concept from the living room into the dining room. I mean, it feels so much better. Like, I know I was kind of like, yeah, do we need to? But, you know, obviously you're always right. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this episode, if you're learning tips along the way, if you're just having fun following along with us and going on this journey with us, we'd really appreciate it. If you liked this video, subscribe to our channel and comment below. It really helps our channel. And, you know, the bigger the channel gets, the more people we can help. And that's really it. So we'll see you guys next weekend. Peace.